so that she can tell you about herself and the company, who she is at the company and all those great <laughs> things. So I'm going to, again, she is not on the stage, but she is on YouTube, Facebook, and wherever else we're streaming through crypto blockchain plug. So Krim, welcome to On the Block. Thank you. That's, oh my goodness, esteemed guest. I've got a lot to live up to. So as an introduction, it's interesting because what we're used to in this space is companies. We're used to these great groups of people building incredible companies under a sort of formal structure. But Hive is a decentralized ecosystem. And so what that means is none of us are part of a centralized company. It is a community that was built by community, which is really cool. And I know that a lot of people hanging out for with you, Naja, are learning about how the important parts of Bitcoin and blockchain and cryptocurrency is that the ledger can be distributed around the world. You can check your information. It's transparent and you understand, you verify, you don't just trust. And it's such an important part of understanding why cryptocurrency is going to change your finances. It's going to change the way you transact value and it changes your relationships with banks and, and other people. So, this idea of decentralized is where Hive really came from. We don't have a company. We have a blockchain that is maintained by, created, and run by community members who are passionate about it. And we have this fast, free, you know, um, transparent and immutable blockchain that does more than just transact cryptocurrency. It transacts value in whatever way you think of value. And that maybe sounds a little a hokey, but... Think about what most people do on the internet day to day or what most people think of as the web or their social connections. We think about Twitter, we think about YouTube, we think about Facebook. And those social connections are incredibly valuable. They're valuable to us, these relationships that we form with people. We've never met amazing crypto babes from around the world that we get to learn from. Um, and you know, this this presence that we build online, we play games online, we our finances, our friends, our blogs, our experiences, all of these things are online. But we have centralized companies that control what we do. And so what we've seen over the last couple of years, especially is, you know, you spend all your time, you build up your company, you're an entrepreneur, and all of a sudden, you're shadow banned on Twitter, or your YouTube page is disabled, or you know whatever the case may be. And all of a sudden those connections that you built, I follow Naja, and then all of a sudden I'm not following her anymore. I don't have control, I don't have sort of the agency over my value that I've built on the internet. Hive and the ecosystem around this blockchain is really meant for a community to be able to make all of those connections uh, with agency you know, to be able to do it and to have it locked in a blockchain. Nobody can change it. It's all there. We can all transact for free, no big, awful gas fees. And, you know, whether or not you are interested in the token aspect, which a lot of people are, a lot of people are into the finance side of things, the tokens, the actual cryptocurrency itself. There's another part of Hive that's, well, I make an account, I hold a crypto wallet, but attached to that wallet is all of my content, is all of the cards I use to play games, is my identity when I go live on a podcast. And all of a sudden, the idea that all of the things that you do on the web are valuable and they belong to you and no one can take them away from you becomes incredibly attractive. And Hive is diverse, as you said, because it's basically people from around the world who are just like, this is my information, this is my life, and I'm gonna live it, and I'm also going to have it you know, in the crypto space. So we have people from everywhere in the world, every country, every color, every gender, and uh, they're all using blockchain in a way that enriches their life, whether it's with the actual cryptocurrency, the token, or whether it's with a service built inside the ecosystem. And it's all just people who are really passionate about decentralization. It's pretty cool. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> yes, I am muted. And mm. I apologize for that. I had to move it. So I was looking at you in the camera and not off to the side. <laughs> so I can't hit my control. So I'm just going to stay off mute. So, Krim, 
I'm going to take you and we're going to backtrack a little bit sure. because the space that we're in, we are newbies. I'm just going to frame it like that. We're new newbies. And I piled it onto you. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you right now for some processes sure. and, and some clarity for folks like me that mm -hmm. are just getting into cryptocurrency and you have just sprung on the fact that you are a decentralized company. So first and foremost, if it's a decentralized company, then who speaks for the company? Who makes decisions for the company? Let's start there first. Let's well, first. sure. And company, that's the word that's gonna trip us up here. So let's just yeah. grab it, crumple it up, chug it out of here. Okay, the, good. The way that we're looking at it mostly is the people who use the blockchain. So we'll say community instead of company. Mm -hmm. But that's a great question because we know often if you just let everyone in a community do whatever they want, uh, stuff doesn't get done. So in a, in a decentralized space, what you need is some sort of method of governance. Now, when you're a newbie to crypto, the idea of governance, you think, okay, government, there's somebody and they're elected and they tell me what to do and it's, mm -hmm. that's it. Mm -hmm. So with Bitcoin, it's something called proof of work. And what happens is essentially at a very, very base level, and please don't at me later on this, is computers solve math, math problems. And the ones that show the work and finish the math problems fastest get the reward. Mm -hmm. And that's basically how it goes. Mm -hmm. Those computers that are solving the problems, if enough of them run the same software, that's the blockchain. A bunch of them need to agree. A majority need to agree. So when we think about how governance works, it's basically we're looking for a consensus between people that agree on, here's how we all agree to be governed. And okay. we all have our say in how we are governed. So with Hive and a decentralized blockchain, um, instead of being proof of work, it's something called proof of stake. Now, without getting into the crazy technical aspects, what it means is if you hold a token, you're like an investor, right? You have some of that token. And if you're holding it for the long term, you should have a say in where that token is going. You should have a say in what's going to happen with that token. You're invested. It's important to you that good things happen with it, not bad things. Otherwise, you wouldn't be holding that token. And so the way that this decentralized ecosystem works is as an investor, you have a voice in the ecosystem. You can vote on the things that you want to happen inside the ecosystem. And it's not just, uh, you know, you go to a polling station and you drop a piece of paper in a box and maybe it's never seen again. This is all public and transparent on the ledger. If you hold any amount of that token, that token backs your voice and your wants. So it's actually very easy to see who's voting for what and who's supporting these witnesses or miners, the word that we're used to from uh, Bitcoin. You pick the ones that represent you. It's kind of like what we do in the real world, except it tends to function a little better because there's no way to really hide the results. Everyone can see what's happening. And if you're not happy, you move that vote around to what you wanna see happen. It's a fascinating sort of use for blockchain that we don't see in sort of the traditional Bitcoin space. It's a little bit different. It's a different way of thinking of governance. Okay, so great with that. And then I just kind of want to unpack a little bit of, of a couple of things extra. So yeah. that we can frame this right so everybody can understand. So if a, a developer came along yes. and a developer or a group of developers created a blockchain mm -hmm. separate from or is it on any of the other coins is it on an, is it a spin off of a of a blockchain or is it a blockchain that was created in and of itself by itself that's a good question. So we're used to the idea of a fork, which is where a chain that is existing and has certain rules mm -hmm. is going along. And some people say, I'm going to take this code, but we're not going to continue in the same direction. 
we're going to fork off on another path and we're going to do something different. And mm. Hive is that. Hive is actually a fork of another blockchain called Steam. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a crazy story there and it could probably take up two or three interviews worth of space. So what I will say is that the Steam blockchain was moving in a centralized direction. There was a sort of singular token holder who had immense power and bought up a big chunk of coins that were believed by the community that no one would ever own them, took over, did all the voting, and basically controlled governance. So when we talk about, hey, you have a voice, imagine for a second if you know that was taken from you because somebody was really, really, really rich. <laughs> that sucks, nobody likes that. So the community was like, hey, cool, you guys can have that chain. We're not particular interest in that. We would like to see decentralized. We would like to see all of the values of what makes blockchain and cryptocurrency so important. We want to uphold them. We want to develop services that, you know, help us better our lives, make social media more social, make cryptocurrency more accessible. So we're going to go. Peace out. And that's what happened. So Hive is now more actually over a year old and going strong. And it forked off a blockchain that was actually almost four years old at the time. So technically the Hive code base is about five years old. It is battle tested. Okay, well that, is, that clears <laughs> that up because we were wondering. Hey. Um, uh, inquiring minds would like to know, and if you're on Clubhouse and are just joining us on stage, on stage, we have, uh, they cut the lights off on me. <laughs> uh, on stage, we have Krim. She's with a platform, a blockchain called High Beauty. Community, community. We're getting our words together here, family. Love it. And this is a good thing because, again, I'm learning along with you all. So we make sure uh, when we bring companies, we really understand thoroughly uh, how they're decentralized, what they're doing, how this whole thing works. And so we're talking to Krim today, again, www.hive.io. You can go there and look at it. If you want to see her, we're also live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, probably everywhere. Um, <laughs> she is, and we'll be answering questions about the Hive community. And yeah. so we're just talking about this decentralization. So I have another uh, kind of a backup question to your sure. introduction. So a community that is decentralized uses their vote to make decisions. Mm -hmm. So if you can walk me through maybe what a decision looks like that you may or may have had to make in the last month. Can you like kind of walk me through um, what, what that looks like? Sure. And now this, I'm going to try and keep it pretty chill because we actually went through something called a hard fork, which is for a blockchain. Um, you can either make a new chain or you can change the rules of the existing chain, which is what we did. There were some uh, decisions around social rewards, which we can touch on later. But essentially, some of the things that the blockchain is meant to do and some of the features that it has, people were like, okay, well, how can we make this a little more attractive? How can we um, create more value in this ecosystem? And so Hive actually, Hive actually has a bunch of ways to earn the token. Now, for a lot of people, you're really used to going out and either buying it at an exchange or, you know, using um, a decentralized exchange and transacting peer to peer. But Hive actually is tied to a social network. And when we kind of talk about all the things that are possible, the rules of how that social network rewards you for what you do on it, that would be one of our governance decisions, for example. And so just recently, we had a hard fork that if you want to hold on to your tokens in a savings account, they will now earn roughly 10% interest at a monthly rate. That was a governance decision where everybody was like, heck yeah, DeFi is very popular right now, decentralized finance, that's everywhere. What if a stakeholder isn't interested in the social aspect? What is it that's gonna have them keep their coins here and grow their value in the Hive ecosystem? So the government's decision was, cool, we are gonna have a saving style account and your tokens are gonna earn you 10% interest. 
that's awesome. That's great. And obviously that, that did go through. People were pretty stoked about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so since you mentioned the coin, mm -hmm. and we are talking about the hive community. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell us the name of your coin and the call letters? Just yeah. so people can start to research. I promise you it's pretty easy. Believe it or not, the token is called hive and mm -hmm. the symbol on the token. Also Hive, H-I-V-E. H-I-V-E. -E. <laughs> I just, I, <laughs> I wanted you to say it. I didn't want to just give it away that easy, but. I know. Um, it's, so the it's Hive simple. token. So I'm going to say this really quickly or ask this question really quickly. And this, of course. Uh, of course, is not in a derogatory way. I just like to invoke conversation. Absolutely. So that our listeners that are asking the same questions can have it answered. Why would I want to be a community hive member? Like, what do you all have to offer? What's so special about what you do? So tell us, so like, why would I be a champion for this thing? Absolutely, that's not derogatory. That's a great, you just set me up like a softball. That's fantastic. All right. All right. No, <laughs> let's, let's look at this sort of from a huge big picture. Now, obviously there are people in the crypto space who are like, I wanna buy every token. One of them's gonna go a thousand times. I'm gonna be rich, woohoo. Like there's that person. But for a lot of people, crypto and blockchain is this constant evolution towards being more independent, whether it's financially independent, whether it's technologically independent, it's about empowering yourself. You're learning about technology. You're making your life for yourself and the people around you better. Great, that's the goal. Well, with Hive, this is kind of like, and we're gonna do sort of a imagination here. Imagine for a second, if everything that you posted on Facebook or Twitter or Reddit, you could see it on every platform. So mm -hmm. imagine that the databases that run those websites that you love, they were all shared. Anyone could go get it. They could grab that information, they could show it off. And now imagine, you know, the stuff that you're posting on those platforms could potentially earn rewards. That's kind of cool. So for a lot of people, blockchain is really difficult. It's really scary. It's really unapproachable. It's what, what, what did uh, what's her face uh, in the States call it today? Uh, super shadowy coders. Super, super shadowy coders. I felt really right. Look at us. <laughs> look at how look at how shadowy and terrifying yeah, we are. Shadowy, right. Yeah. I, so, I, well, I, I won't even go into what I felt like when she said that. But anyway, go ahead. So there's this sort of uh, you're inherently a little weirded out by something new. Then you've got people in power telling you, hey, you're a, a nefarious underworld element if you're interested in this. And so, you know, Hive is a space where what are things that you do now that you're really familiar with? What if that was priming you to start really understanding cryptocurrency and to really kind of give you, I don't want to say it's like a gateway drug into the crypto world, but for a lot of people, Hive is their first crypto. They so what I mean by that, I, uh, it's a bad term, but at the same time, it's pretty accurate. Well, so I'm, a re I'm a recovering coinaholic, so gateway drug, <laughs> it kind of fits in that. Yeah, so go yeah. ahead. Yeah, so imagine for a second, what is something that you might do online right now? And, and sort of two big examples, you could pick almost anything, but two big examples would be, I like to write blogs about my life. I travel and I love to share stories and pictures. And for a long time, I've been making my own website or I've been sharing them on Instagram or whatever. But imagine for a second, if everybody that came along, these people that started to follow you, Instagram or Facebook or whomever could never take those follows away. Mm. That person and you have built a lasting connection that is on a blockchain that anywhere in the world that you might be, any front end, any website, any app you build, I'm crimson clad and I can tap into that data and I can see that Naja and I follow each other. And so we might use the same blogging app and we blog and we follow each other. And then I also really like playing games. I love games online. So I'm gonna play, you know, a card game online. And the crimson clad that you know from my blog is the same crimson clad and the same wallet that I use to play this game. And all my cards, they can never get lost. They can never go, they're attached to a blockchain. And I know that the Naja I'm playing with 
in this game, call it Splinterlands, one of the biggest, you know, sort of uh, blockchain games out there right now. Mm -hmm. I know it's you that I'm playing against. And I know I found you because I followed your awesome blockchain content on a blog. And I know I'm gonna tip you today. I wanna send you some hive for how fabulous you are. So I'm gonna send it to you and it's not gonna be a big long gobbledygook address. It's gonna be whatever your account name is. That's your, your blockchain address. For me, it's Crimson Clad. If you wanna find me anywhere in the blockchain ecosystem, if you wanna send me money or receive money from me, if you wanna play a game with me, if you wanna know what I have to say, that's it. That's my, where, where is it? Over here. That's my blockchain address on Hive. Crimson Clad. So that's let's, it. let's get into that. Mm -hmm. So are you telling me that everybody that is listening to us online and on Clubhouse can join this community, yep. set up their username, yep. and paid in cryptocurrency using that actual username Correct. on the Hive blockchain? Correct. That's it. That's absolutely it. So let's just kind of look at it as I love to call it an ecosystem. And, you know, whatever it is that you are in crypto for or whatever it is that you do sort of in the idea of social media, it doesn't have to be a traditional social media. Podcasting is a big one. Live streaming is a huge one. There are sites and services that use the features of the Hive blockchain to give you control over your money and data, but that are services that you're familiar with. So if you really want to think about Hive, it's basically taking all the things that you do now, but giving you some more control over them. It's really what it is. This blockchain, anyone can come. It's an open source blockchain. They can build on it. Um, and there are a number of projects, everything from NFTs to games to blogging to people who solely just, you know, trade the token speculatively. So, you know, if you're just a newbie, and you're like, I don't know a whole lot about crypto. I'm a little hesitant to come and put a ton of money in. But what I do want to do is get a feel for it. And I want to learn about the technology. Hive might be a great match for you. You might decide, well, you know what? I'm already posting on my Twitter account. I'm going to go to, you know, Dbuzz or I'm going to go to one of the Hive platforms and I'm going to post some updates and make some friends there. And if I earn a little cryptocurrency in the background, that's awesome. That's great. And you can do that because there is sort of a social rewards pool. It's an interesting concept. Yes, a very interesting concept. And so we're always talking about ways to help our community really um, uh, just add to their actual, and I'm going to call it wealth because down the line, we know it's going to be an incredible experience for mm -hmm. all of us that are listening and learning and stacking Whatever they're stacking, I'm stacking Satoshi's, stacking yep. whatever. But what do the social rewards look like? Do I get paid for how, like, what, what is a social reward and how do I take part in getting social rewards? Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's essentially very similar to now. Like when we think about if you go viral on a social platform, let's think about that. Um, one of the easiest sort of direct comparisons to make would be something like Reddit. Reddit, you make a post, people vote it up or down. And when you go to sort of a community on Reddit, call it, you know, the blockchain community, Naja's on the blog post, people like it, they vote it to the top of the page, more people see it, more people vote, or they don't like it, they vote it down, it goes down the page, not as many people see it. When you right. think about that, that's a pretty standard uh, way that we sort and think of valuable content on the internet. Everywhere we go, that's what we do. Do we like it? Does it get a lot of likes? Does it not? So when you come to Hive, it's the same sort of thing. There are likes, there are dislikes. And basically what it means is over a seven day period, the likes and dislikes are kind of voting on what is this piece of content worth? And stakeholders can say, I love it. I'm voting on it. I'm going to vote it up. I'm going to allocate some social rewards to it. Other people might be like, nah, don't like it. Going to vote it down. At the end of seven days, wherever that sort of amount of votes shakes out, you may end up actually earning a cut of a reward pool that is available daily. So for most people, it's not it's not what you think of when you think of sort of these DeFi stories where somebody aped in for $10 and they got out at the top of the Ponzi and they made, you know, $10,000 and everybody else got 
I'm not sure if I could swear, but they didn't do very well. No, you can, you can. Oh yeah, people get fucked, right? That's what happens. That's how some of these structured coins work. Well, with Hive, it's basically come make friends, build a community. It's no different than any other social media. If you come to social media and you never network, nobody's going to see your posts. You're going to have no Instagram followers. You're going to have no Twitter followers. You're going to have no YouTube community. So if you come to Hive and you just start posting into the void at first, expecting thousands of dollars, it's not going to happen. But what it is going to do is basically allow you to take that stuff that you're doing for free now that Facebook is making a fucking killing off of. You're putting it in a place where they can't take it from you, where people that follow and like the content and as you build that community can actually say, I do like this and I am going to allocate some crypto to it. And as you kind of build that following, there's a good chance that you could find some social rewards in it. And then it's like, okay, well, now I've got these tokens. Maybe I'll hold them and I'll earn interest on them. Maybe I'll trade them. Maybe I'll use them to play games because I love games and I want a free roll on these games. I don't want to put, you know... So all of a sudden, there's just this giant interconnected ecosystem. Hmm. All these services using the same token, using the same wallet address. And again, just kind of allowing you to use the information that you're putting on the internet right anyway, now. You're doing right it. Now. You're doing it. Anyway, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, that yes. could disappear out from under you at any time. And that's the biggest thing. I will say a lot of people get scared about the idea of free speech because they think, whoa, the only people who want free speech are people who are mean and it's hate speech. And it's it's such a it's such a horrible sort of talk that we're scared to have these days because we say, well, Trump got banned off Twitter and so you know, we don't want him to have a voice. And it's it's tough because there are also people like you and me who are talking about crypto and the government doesn't super love that and we get suppressed as well. Yes. There are plenty of people who should be saying, well, I want control over this. Even if you're not saying anything bad and most people aren't, that's the reality is you should have sort of more control over your data. How does it get monetized? Who are the people that you connect with? What are the communications that you have with people around the world? And is it okay that a single company or a single platform like a Twitter, like a Facebook or whatever, has that control to manipulate it. A great example is, I'm not a huge Twitter fan, but I do use it now and again. I have been up to three, four, 5,000 followers multiple times. And every couple of months, my follower count just gets smashed down back to about a thousand people. I don't know why, I don't really, I'm a nice person. I post pictures of my dogs and I talk about crypto, but I, I simply cannot get traction. And people who know that they've followed me in the past are like, I, I don't even know how I unfollowed you. I followed you again. These are the sorts of things that happen every day to totally normal people talking about what it's like to live in Venezuela, talking about what it's like to, you know, be part of the Bitcoin revolution in El Salvador, uh, about people who live in parts of the US that there's not a lot going on. So they start building connections because, you know, maybe I live in a small town and I'm looking for people around me who understand my point of view, whatever the case may be. There's no platform that can take that away from you. And all of a sudden, that's really interesting. Now, it's not to say that there's a bad experience or there's no tools for you to avoid people you don't like. But what it means is if if, if on Facebook today, Facebook says, I don't like you, Krim, then I'll be like, OK, I'm going to go over to Twitter. Everything that I've already done is still there. Still and is. I can use a different tool or a different service. Right. And the, the number one sort of takeaway, if you want to learn sort of about Hive, is that it is a giant toolbox. It's full of every type of app, of website, of service imaginable, all kind of tied back to you and tied back to your keys. So your ownership is of your tokens, but it's also of all of the information that you've put into the blockchain. And okay. you will be able to take that with you wherever you go. Okay. And that being said, because I know some people, even though they say they want to be in a decentralized world, they mm -hmm. still wind up trying to rely on uh, uh, the centralized folks because yeah. that's where they feel like the people are. So what would you say to that person Absolutely. that is that has a podcast that now wants to start to, to put their information on high, but still wants the best of both worlds because they feel like 
their podcast and some of their other things would best be served on platforms where people are, what would you say to them? Would it be come over and just help us build the community? What would you say to them? Well, that's a fantastic message. Uh, but you know what? I'd also say, you know what? Fair. You're not wrong. Think of anything that you're trying to grow. If you see a crowd of people who look like they're interested in their product, or you see an empty parking lot, who, where are you going to take this thing that you want to grow? Are you going somewhere where you feel like there's not a lot of people? Or are you going to go where everybody is and be like, dudes, follow me. We're going to yeah. go have a killer party in that parking lot. You just got to come. You have to go where the people are. So, you know, Hive has a ton of users. It has millions of wallet addresses. And there's, you know, so like I said, number one uh, blockchain game on state of the dApps as of yesterday. So it's not that there are no people on Hive, but it's a drop in the bucket compared to legacy social media. You're right. If I'm on Twitter with, you know, 45 million followers, it's going to be a little uncomfortable to kind of step away. But who says that you can't use more than one tool at a time? And that is something that I feel like is probably a message that kind of matches up with your, you know, your sort of education series is I'm building a toolbox that empowers me to have the best financial future and to have the best sort of um, technological future. I, I see all these tools and all these really cool things happening around blockchain and crypto. I'm going to use all of the ones that suit me to build the best thing possible. So with Hive, yeah, absolutely. There's a great opportunity to come and build something that doesn't exist or to help continue momentum with something that does. But there's no rules that says, hey, if I come to Hive, I can't keep posting on legacy media. What it means is, hopefully it will never happen to you that you lose everything that you've worked for on YouTube or on Twitter or on Instagram or your podcast or Ooh. whatever. But if you do, and you've also been proactively building in a community like Hive, and you've been taking advantage of these services, and you've been expanding your reach into this other ecosystem full of like-minded people, that's going to soften the blow a little bit. And we're starting to see more and more people are like, okay, you know what? I already post the same thing to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. We push it out to uh, anchor podcasts and then we, you know, whatever. One more thing is honestly probably going to benefit you in the long run because we are seeing a switch towards web 3.0, which is this crazy, you know, shiny term. All it means is, it's no longer their internet, it's your internet. That's a big shift and it's hard to wrap our brains around. But what if you just tried it on the side and you realize, holy crap, I love it. Those other platforms, man, it's time. Let's move everybody over. Because it is, it's time. My staff right now is about to fall off their chairs. Because <laughs> guess what, folks? We were waiting on this interview so that we can be the change we want to see. We are going to be adding high. I love it. To our arsenal to our toolbox. Uh, we are ready. And uh, I know they're going to just be like, oh my gosh, you didn't just do this to us. Yes, we, are. we need to speak it. We need yep. to be it. We need to do all those things. So I am saying we are joining the Hive community effective tomorrow morning. Because I know everybody's getting off work today, but they're listening. <laughs> all they're the going departments to... in here are listening like, oh my goodness, but we're excited. I'm excited. And yeah. it's, it's definitely about the Hive token, but it's definitely about decentralization because when you were, explaining, when you were explaining what if, like people... Oh, sorry about that. Natalie, we got to get you on mute real quick. <laughs> Oh, well, somebody um, has a question. It's fair. But. Um, when you were actually talking about what if like the platform shut down and all the hard work it's that gone. we put into these platforms is gone, you know, for us it's real because we have an over-the-counter exchange where we sell Bitcoin. And what if regulatories come in and say, no more of that, shut them down. They're pulling all of our content. Yep. And so we've got to, and we've, we've, we've needed to do this long ago um, when Erica found you and, and I'm just always so busy when Erica found you and told me what we would be talking about today. 
I said, and I did some little research and I was like, this is it. But we're going to wait to this day to make the announcement. <laughs> um, and all of our social media gurus that are in here, I know that all of them are listening right now via the platform, via YouTube, Facebook, <laughs> or Instagram. All of those places. That's <laughs> right. Those places. We are adding Hive because mm. it is the thing to do. Like we're in the space and we need to not only talk the talk, but walk the walk. And so anybody that's listening to the sound of our voice that has any type of content, blogs, of like whatever it is you're doing, you need to really consider the fact that yes, there's going to be some regulation happening. We heard today through, through the congressional hearings, I think it was what it was. Mm -hmm. uh, like there, we don't know what's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. And we have got to make sure that our content, our, our freedom of speech, our liberty is ours. That is what this space is about. And being in a decentralized, um, being on a decentralized platform, whether you agree with the, the tokenomics of it or not. And I don't say that because a lot of people get into that. They don't yep. believe in the tokenomics. Well, don't totally. believe in the tokenomics. That's fine. Well, what about our freedom and our liberty? Like I've been... Um, you know, as quiet as this kept, I don't do a lot of complaining, um, Krim, but um, we've been kicked off of, um, we've been, everything except constant contact. Yep. yep. Any, anything that we've tried to do email marketing, we've been kicked sure. off. Yep. We've been silenced from a different, a bunch of different platforms for 30 days. We've been in this for three years and people don't even really know the struggle that we've had just trying to be a normal business in a normal society that bears the word crypto or they hear us talking about crypto absolutely and they flag us i was just talking to our social media um guru i'm gonna call her that today about like our social media engagement and i partly feel a little bit sad because i know that when you look at our instagram it's not the fact that people are not really engaging but it's also because they're pushing our stuff down a hundred percent. Um, and so I, I gotta really get that balance because I can't chastise her for her job. And so we've got to just really figure out where we go for the people who want to hear and do and be yeah. what we're offering, but also that we're able to still talk to those people that don't understand what we're trying to do and then bring them into the decentralized space. Yeah. And so this is going to be our first step social media wise i love it our second because there's another platform that we use that's all about african americans it's called our black truth yep. um we're, we're posting there because we know we can't be censored um and we can't they won't pull us down off there but hive will be our first step and i do also want to ask another question as it relates sure. to marketing mm -hmm. um does Hive put any marketing dollars out right now to try to bring people in? And if so, how does the community vote on that thing? Yeah, that's a good question. I will say that this is definitely sort of a weak point as it stands right now because everything is grassroots. Everything is community driven. But what I also can say is people who build in the Hive ecosystem obviously are creating services that they want to be used. So we are seeing dApps, platforms, uh, websites, shall we say, Splinterlands, I know I keep bringing it up, but they're a really great example. They're a really sort of shining example of what's possible. They have a huge marketing budget that they're kind of rolling with now and huge in the crypto space is very huge, but for them, yeah. They're rolling with marketing. And a lot of it is, again, grassroots. They're pushing marketing dollars through and their growth has been explosive. It's been explosive. It's excellent. And it's not because they're spending a lot of money. It's because it's a cool product that people want. So it's kind of 50-50. There is no centralized company. There's no block one. There's no sort of um, one company that's holding a pile of tokens that's doling them out for traditional marketing for themselves can be problematic because the crypto space runs on hype. We know that. You don't necessarily have to have those good tokenomics, like you're saying. You just have to have somebody who's pumping out a, you know, announcement after announcement with a flashy graphic. And if it ever actually happens, it's irrelevant. It's, you know, the marketing. So right. I would say there's a little bit of a weakness there. But 
On the flip side, the community is stepping up. And a great example is just recently, there is something, uh, it's a DAO type uh, mechanism. Now, for a lot of people listening, you may not know what that is, but it's essentially a portion of tokens put aside that everybody together makes governance decisions on. And you can submit a proposal and say, hey, this is how I would like to get a bit of this money. I want to spend it on this. Here's what I'm going to do. What do you think? And people can vote to allocate funds towards that. Just recently, a marketing proposal was actually funded by the community and it's been going on. It's been Instagram ads. It's been traditional social media ads, um, some influencer campaigns and things like that. So there's a really great example of, yeah, we don't have a company doing it, but people in the community who are marketing minded went out and hired a fantastic uh, PR company, started putting up press releases and are paying for this out of the ecosystem. Um, out of the mechanism that exists in the ecosystem to do so. So it's, you know, it's kind of crazy that uh, things are rolling along and gaining steam the way that they are. Because if you think about it, it shouldn't be happening. It's a bunch of people who are all around the world, who aren't meeting face to face, who are passionate about one aspect or another of Hive. And yet, part of the reason that Hive is fantastic and other blockchains have this is we know that we have to spend money and we have to encourage people inside our ecosystem to continue growing it. And so there's a mechanism for that. There is a fund that is available for that. Um, and I suspect it will continue to grow for sure. All right. Well, I'm just going to say this, uh, Krim, because you have been awesome. I know that we have a couple of hands raised on the, sure. um, and we want to make sure folks are, Absolutely. asking questions. So we're going to bring Momo to the stage mm -hmm. on Clubhouse. Sure. And then, um, those of you that are on staff that are actually uh, watching the social media, if you have any questions, if you want to put them in the private chat or the comments, I would appreciate that. But at this time, we'll, because we're nearing the top of the hour and we're going to close mm -hmm. out. If you have any questions, for Krim or anything about the actual hive.io mm -hmm. or myself, please feel free to raise your hand. Momo, go ahead with your question. We are listening. Hello, good evening, ladies. Thank you for the opportunity. Love your passion, love your description. All the best wishes. There's one thing that I will say respectfully, and it's, it's because I have a lot of black friends, I have a lot of black communities, and I have a serious problem with something that started in the early 80s, and that's called HIV. I understand the meaning behind hive, but I love the meaning behind jive. And I think if we're gonna target and try to market this to our brothers and sisters, I think it's it's not, a, I don't like the name Hive because it starts with HIV, but yep. I like the name Jive. Please keep that in mind out of respect for our brothers and sisters. Totally. And, you know, I will say yeah. that it's uh, Hive as a word for a lot of people. When you think about it, you don't always kind of go to some of this sort of natural things like, one of the best examples of Hive is a beehive. It's a bunch of nodes that work together to get information passed and to build a strong, th thriving community. So it is a community-driven project. It's fairly unlikely that the name will change now, but I think you're right. And I think it is a little uh, off-putting. Sorry? Oh. Oh, you know what? I am oh. so sorry. <laughs> Well, thank you. And and I appreciate that question. And I'm going to ask Krim if she can repeat I what can. she just said. It's my bad. I'm so used to being on Clubhouse and muting it's my out. Fault. I muted <laughs> out. No, it's not your fault. At all. <laughs> I hit the mute button while you were talking because mm -hmm. while he was asking this question. So she's going to go back in. And so I am. Krim, if you can remember, start from scratch. All right, I'm going to try. Um, and, and sorry, I do apologize. I just don't happen to have an iPhone. So unfortunately for you Clubhouse people, I'm making your lives and Naja's lives difficult. But what I was saying is, you know what? You're 
absolutely right. There are absolutely certainly some people who find the word hive a little uncomfortable and you have a really distinct and important reason. And some people just think of it as kind of an ooky word because they think of whatever connotate, you know what the big one is? Star Wars, you know, the or pardon me, Star Trek, the Borg, the robots, the, the hive. Yeah. Yeah. People think of that. But one of the places that it comes from and the best sort of natural uh, example that I was just mentioning is that when you think of a hive and the way that it relates to and pertains to social activity and blockchain activity, it's like a beehive. All of these little bees are separate nodes in a network. They work together to pass information effectively. Uh, they are a social community and they build together to make something stronger. So I understand and I actually, I, I kind of agree with you on some points. What I can say is, you know, it's probably unlikely that the blockchain name will change, but it's not, it's not unthinkable, but it's pretty unlikely. But the important part um, that I think that you really touched on is Hive is sort of the powerhouse underneath everything that's going on. Hive is sort of this blockchain database. What you're looking for in a lot of cases are the services that are important to people and that's what connects people. And the things built on top of Hive, in many cases, and one of the reasons that this blockchain is impactful, People don't know that it's a blockchain based service. They just play the game. They just found a podcasting site. They just use a YouTube alternative. They just put their thoughts out on Peak D, which is this beautiful blogging site, or they use Have You Been Here or Pinmapple, which are these really fun phone apps that allow you to check into places on the map and share where you've been all around the world. They don't recognize the blockchain aspect until later. And so I, totally understand how the word for a lot of people is, it's not a token that I would buy. And I don't have a perfect answer for you on what that looks like in terms of marketing and changing the name. But what I can say is in a lot of cases, the services and the tools that you're going to pick from this ecosystem to, you know, market or use or build on aren't actually really going to talk about Hive at all. They're going to be their own services. Um, and most of them don't actually have that in the name, which is important if that's, you know, the thing that really is, uh, it just puts you right off. But you're going to be using Splinterlands or you're going to be on Peak D or you're going to be posting on Leo Finance or you're going to be using NFT Showroom to share digital art. All of a sudden you realize that uh, sort of that underlying tool structure is not the part that brings people together. And it's not the part that day to day is reminding you about these things that are problematic and hurtful. Um, and I, you know, it, it's tough because you're always going to say, sure, I'll change the name decentralized community. I, I can't promise you that it'll happen, but I understand exactly where you're coming from. And so yeah. Momo, thank you very much for that feedback and thank you for taking the stage and bringing that, that up. And I would just say, too, for uh, and I don't speak for or try to speak for the African-American community specifically. I speak uh, to the African-American community and live in that community across the U.S. Um, I will say that when I first took a look at the word high until you just said that I had no thought of HIV, even though it's prevalent. Yeah. Um, and and in, in a lot of cases, very um, up front in our community, but I thought of a hive, a, a community of bees mm -hmm. uh, getting pollen and bringing it in and storing up for the winter and making honey and making something that we can use that is beneficial on the tables across the United States. Um, that's, that's how I looked at it. And so I thank you for a different perspective because I never even looked at hive as that HIV um, and, and have lost several friends and family to that. So, you know, again, I appreciate you for that perspective. And again, um, totally unexpected. And, and that's coming from me, who's in the hood, loves the hood, building silicon hoods. So I just want to say thank you for that. Um, thank Absolutely. you for that mo moment. Ms. Ms. Naja, can I just um, tell Krim, she was saying that she had a... Um, uh, Android, but now not for tonight. But if you'd like to, you can also get on with the Android now. 
Oh, look at this. I'm so stuck in blockchain technology. I've missed what everybody's doing on the real platform. Okay, I'm sorry. See, it is my fault, Naja. It is. <laughs> yeah, it started Mother's Day. So about a month, well, about a month and a half now. Oh, they, okay. They launched the Androids. Fabulous. So, but you're like me. We, we, we are passionate about what we do in this space. And we miss so many things. And if we didn't have a Natalie uh, on her... <laughs> Can I can I borrow a Natalie? Can I Natalie, <laughs> Natalie is awesome. Just kind of keeping us in check and, and everybody else in the community. So uh, we are nearing the top of the hour. So we want to just first of all say thank you to, to Krim for coming on today. Thank you to each and every one of you that's, that are on Clubhouse that are listening. And again, thank you to Momo for that enlightening Mm -hmm. uh, perspective as well as Natalie. Just thank you all for all that you do. And then uh, as we get into this decentralized uh, platform, getting our social rewards and spreading mm -hmm. our social love, uh, we, we look forward to seeing you inside the hive. Uh, again, this is definitely where we need to be, where we need to go, because we have no idea what is getting ready to take place. Mm -hmm. And we just need to be ready. And my grandfather used to always say, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. That's so if right. they snatch our accounts tomorrow or the next day, um, we'll be ready. And so um, yeah. we're excited about that. And any closing words that you may have, Krim? Yeah, that's a doozy, isn't it? Um, I basically look at it as when I came to this ecosystem, I didn't really know what it was about. And I loved the idea of, I want to take pictures of the places I travel and I want to share them with people who haven't been there and I want them to share with me. That's why I found blockchain. I was into Bitcoin, but that's why I found Hive. And I thought, cool, I'm going to post a bunch of pictures. I'm going to make a bunch of money. It'll be fun. I'll make friends. And here I am, you know, almost five years later and the tech and the values and the idea that I am sort of taking the reins on some of the things that I do around the internet day to day, but making them work for me in a way that's still open and communicative and powerful in terms of meeting people like you and everyone who's listening, that became so important to me that I started diving into the code base. And no one could have told me that I would become someone running a uh, witness, a minor, that I would be sort of liaising and volunteering, talking about this blockchain, that I would be diving into the tech. But that journey and that passion to me has made me even more strongly connected to the crypto space, to Bitcoin and to financial freedom and to personal sovereignty and to all these things that, you know what, in a lot of ways, I'm pretty privileged and have never really had to think about but it's making me think about them and it's making me excited to help more people think about them. And that's a huge gift that Bitcoin brings us and that other blockchain and crypto uh, communities bring us. And Hive is one that basically empowers a bunch of different things. And you can try whichever one suits you best, but it's still kind of bringing you a little bit further along that journey. And you could take it wherever you want to go. It's as voluntary as you want it to be. You can just trade tokens or you can move your whole life online and back it up and own it and grow there. And that's your choice. So, you know, if you're excited about it or you want to get involved or you have questions about it, let me know. Ask Naja. We would love to see you. All right. Well, you know what? That was a fabulous closing <laughs> statement, so I will say less. I would just like to thank each and every one of you for joining us for our On the Block series, which is once a month. And today we have the fabulous Krim from thehive.io, or it's hive.io. I don't want to mm -hmm. say the hive, so hive.io. Correct. Again, thank you for joining us today. You have an incredible rest of your evening. Thank Peace you. and blessings from Crypto Blockchain Plug, your over-the-counter exchange brick and mortar in the city of Los Angeles, moving and building silicon hoods near you. Talk to you all soon. Peace and blessings. All right, Miss.